Welcome back. You are watching another edition of today's science lesson. As I promised, this next episode is going to be talking about a newly published vulnerability in the iPhone iOS architecture. This vulnerability specifically affects stored backups from your iPhone on a computer. So you might be wondering, if I use iCloud, why would I ever store my backup on my computer? Well, for starters, iCloud is not a complete backup for your iPhone. iCloud mainly backs up your pictures and your videos as well as your iPhone system and application software settings. So that sounds pretty good, right? Well, you still have to re-download or reinstall all of your music and all of your applications. If you do a full encrypted backup on your PC, it will restore everything from scratch like you're looking at your exact same phone. Now that assumes you have all your music on your computer as well as on your phone and the latest version of the app actually downloaded on your computer. If you are regularly or even semi-regularly backing up your phone to your computer, everything should be up to date. You can do a regular unencrypted and unpassword protected backup, but you don't want to do that. The most complete backup backs up your credit card and your keychain password items, as well as all your health data, and that's encrypted. Now, the vulnerability that was recently discovered targets this password, the password to your encryption keys. It's a Russian company called Elcomsoft that is publishing details of this vulnerability. Well, they aren't going into that much detail about the technical aspect of their vulnerability, but they are mentioning a little bit of how they can exploit it. The company identifies itself as creating password recovery tools, and it has a software suite to recover passwords from iOS devices. Now, some of my savvier users will be wondering, what's the difference between password recovery and password hacking? For all intents and purposes, for this video, we're going to treat them as if they are the exact same, and honestly, in this application, they kind of are. So here's where things get a little bit technical. Your data is encrypted, but the password itself is not encrypted. Now, don't get me wrong, your password is not stored as plain text. It is still protected, but your password is hashed. The next logical question is, what's the difference between hashing and encryption? For starters, encryption is a two-way reversible function. If both parties have the encryption keys, both parties can see the content, but no one in the middle. The middleman would be a nefarious party trying to eavesdrop upon the conversation. Hashing in itself is a one-way function, meaning without the original input, you cannot derive the output. Hashing is a one-way mathematical value that translates a variable length password, for instance, into a fixed character set. This allows companies to store essentially your password without actually storing what your password is. When an application receives a username and password, it performs a hashing operation on this password. It will then compare this hash password to the stored hash password value of the known user. In cryptography, this would be known as the authentication step. Keeping a stored database of the hash password is considered the industry standard. If your database was simply encrypted, if your encryption keys got compromised, the whole database could instantly be decrypted. If your database of the hash passwords gets broken in, the individual passwords of the users is still not known. The simplest way to crack a hash password is guessing the password itself and then hashing it. Open source or free software will often have the source code available, so you'll know which hashing algorithm to use. In fact, there are a couple industry standard hashing algorithms, but by knowing the algorithm you still don't know the password. One set of industry standard algorithms include the SHA or SHA series, or the Secure Hashing Algorithms. SHA itself was actually developed by the National Security Agency, or the NSA. Now, the Alcomsoft software relies on brute force hacking, meaning it tries every sort of combination it can until it gets the right password. On iOS 9, it could try 2,400 passwords per second. Now, when the software is allowed to take advantage of GPU acceleration, it can try 150,000 passwords per second. 
However, here's the big kicker. On iOS 10, using only the CPU, it can try 6 million passwords per second. Now what gives? How come it can try the passwords so much faster? That's because Apple switched from a PB KDF2 hashing algorithm to an SHA-256 algorithm. The PB KDF2 algorithm has 10,000 iterations, while the SHA-256 only has one iteration. With multiple hashing iterations, the value received from one hash is then hashed again, and that value is hashed again. Multiple hashing iterations is more computationally expensive and more time consuming. While it's not necessarily more secure, it does take a longer time to perform, meaning it takes a longer time to be hacked. The reason it's not necessarily more secure is because the number of iterations is published or well established. Now there is one way to actually make a hash more secure. It can be made more secure by adding salts to each password before you hash it. Salting the hash appends a random string of characters to the password before it's hashed. This makes it extremely difficult to use a dictionary attack, guessing the password by using entries in a dictionary. If the salt is truly random, then it makes it really difficult to guess what the original input is and hash that to get the true hash value. If salted, the input wouldn't be any known dictionary value. Apple has acknowledged this issue and plans to address it in an upcoming security update. In the meantime, they just recommend that users actually use a password to protect their own computer. They also recommend whole disk encryption, so if your disk is encrypted and your computer is password protected, then still hackers would have a hard time. Arguably, at that point, it would be simpler to simply look over your shoulder while you're using your phone than to actually try to guess your passwords. In the United States, health data is considered confidential, but that doesn't necessarily mean that hackers will have any value from getting your step count. It's simply a matter of principle. Apple will only allow you to back up your health data if you're using an encrypted backup. However, we all understand the risks of letting our credit cards or username and passwords to sensitive accounts being exposed. Yahoo recently confirmed that data associated with over 500 million user accounts was stolen. Among the majority of that data was actually hashed passwords. So now you know what that means and you know the potential risk. Unfortunately, telephone numbers, dates of birth, and possibly unencrypted security question answers were included. This hack was most likely sponsored by a state actor. What that means is a foreign government essentially hired a hacking company to get this data. State-sponsored actors are some of the hardest to defend against because of the scale of their resources. At minimum, what you should do if your account's been hacked is creating a new strong password that hasn't been used on any other site. You should look at enabling two-factor authentication and changing passwords with any backup emails associated with the account. Finally, you should look at changing the answers to all your security questions or using completely different security questions. More information is available at help.yahoo.com. That's all I have for you guys today. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about the content I talked about today, feel free to send me a message.